Hello and welcome back to the Lumen Weekly Q&A. Here we are again with some questions on the couch. We're on the leather couch this time, the one that Nero was on last time, and Nero's over there. He's right over there on the big brown couch. It's actually, that's more his couch than this one. He sits on there all day long. And this one, he actually sleeps on in the night. When we make too much noise down there in the office, then he comes up here and this is where he naps, like a serious nap. I don't know if you should call that a nap. Maybe this is where he sleeps, not naps. He naps on the couch down there on the pillow. Or he naps outside in the sun, but here he sleeps. So this is a serious couch. So we've got to have some serious questions this time. <laughs> we don't. I don't have that many questions this time. Uh, you guys didn't, most of them are actually smalls. And there are a couple of big ones, or a couple that I can talk a, more, a bit more about. But there are actually not that many. I estimate like a half hour video at most, which is not so bad because I have to go to sleep and go to spinning in the morning and that's gonna be terrible, that's gonna be torture but I'm gonna do it. It's the right thing to do, to exercise. <sighs> okay, so, now, uh, if you can hear a faint buzzing or humming in the background, that's a fan, that's a PC fan. It's not my PC fan. It's the only other person in the house with a PC's PC fan. <laughs> it's her fan. She's actually in bed now. I don't think she's, I, sh I don't know why I'm making my voice so soft. She said she doesn't mind if I record now. And um, I don't think she's sleeping yet. I don't think anyone can sleep through me talking. <laughs> and it's echoing throughout the house here. So that's just unlucky. But we've got some questions to look at here. And I there are a couple of really interesting ones here, actually. But a lot of them are smalls, which is not a problem. It's just, you know less to answer. <laughs> anyway, so I've got a few things that I want to talk about at the end of this video as well. So it's more just about like what I'm uploading during the week, uh, the plans and all that stuff, basically. Not a lot to talk about, pretty much nothing actually. So firstly, Fab12UCB asks, yes, I, I got his na name right because he actually told me exactly how to, he spelled it out for me. Jeez. How can I get it wrong in the first place? Anyway, he asks, what's your favorite film and favorite film, I suppose he means film genre. So favorite type of movie and favorite movie. And then the next question actually ties in with this one, or at least I'm making a tie in with this one. Uh, Firestorm123 asks, who's your favorite comedic actor? I'm not talking about stand-up comedy or improv or anything like that, but like movies and TV shows. So. <laughs> I discussed this with Ride Panda, and she said that you guys aren't gonna be happy with my answer. She said you're not gonna be happy. So I'm gonna answer the, the second question first and say that Brad Pitt's my favorite comedic actor. <laughs> it's, it's actually a really terrible answer, but it's my answer. That's my answer. Brad Pitt is a funny guy. He has a very subtle humor and it, I enjoy it immensely. Okay, so if I had to cite a few movies that I thought he was funny in, then I don't know if you guys saw Burn After Reading. He had a very small role in that, but he was he was absolutely hilarious. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith was amazing. The Mexican was amazing as well. Those two, really good. The Oceans movies, they were good as well. They really were. Uh, he's just a really funny guy. I, I like watching movies with him in. I watched Moneyball recently, and although it was a drama, I still enjoyed like every second of the movie. And the, the small funny parts in there, were absolutely amazing. Okay, I, I don't know. Okay, so you guys probably don't agree. You probably expected someone like, is his name Seth Rogen? Seth Rogen, uh, Will Ferrell, someone like that. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel those guys. They're not as cool. What's the other guy from Date Night? She, she actually said I should say someone like that. Steve Carell. He's also good. They're all good. They're all good, but they're just not as solid. And then. <laughs> um, what's your favorite film or film genre? So that's going to tie in with this. And my favorite movie of all time, Blade Runner. Straight up, that is the best movie ever made. It was amazing. Now, there are a couple that follow suit very, very closely. This echo is a little bit annoying, but I can't do anything about it. So there are a couple that follow suit very closely that are nearly as good as Blade Runner, but they're not quite as good. Okay? Um, so... I'm gonna also just give you guys an extra here and tell you who my favorite actors are because I like talking about this. We I don't know why, but for some reason I spoke about this a lot recently. Nero just went into sleep position. Now I really wanna turn, I'm gonna turn the tripod and show you. I'm gonna turn it and show you. Just hold on for a second, okay? Eek. Ooh, this is bad, hold on. I need to brace this thing. 
There you go. Oh, oh, oh. Just working on your legs. They are slender, so I'm not sure if they're gonna hold. But here we go, I'm turning it. Bum, 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 bum. Can you see him? I just wanna make sure you can see. Look at that. Oh, he's like, oh, yeah, my boy. It's nice. He says, be quiet outside, bird. Be quiet out there. I'm trying to sleep. Well, he didn't really say that. He doesn't look like he's saying that right now. He looks like he's trying to sleep. Seriously trying to sleep. And he's probably really angry at Daddy for making this noise. But can you blame Daddy? Daddy has a lot of people he wants to talk to. <laughs> so he's, he's looking at me very unhappily. Is that a word? Unhappily? I like it. If it's not, that's just too bad. Because I'm going to use it. So, uh, we were talking about movies. So, Blade Runner, amazing movie. My favorite movie type or genre. Do you want to take a guess? I love sci-fi movies, okay? And I like sci-fis, westerns, and adventure movies. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I like adventure movies. So, uh, I don't know. I have a thing for westerns. One of my favorite actors, uh, Harrison Ford. Clint, uh, the, the Harrison Ford and Clint Eastwood are amazing. But if I had to give you a top three... Um, or top two. <laughs> it doesn't work. But top two tied would be Brad Pitt and Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford might take the top spot, but Brad Pitt has some amazing movies out as well. Uh, some really good movies that I enjoyed. Like the one that really stands out is I love Troy. I like actually like all his movies. Not that's not actually a thing. We don't need to talk about that. But top five uh, actors definitely Harrison Ford, Brad Pitt. Bruce Willis is really good most of the time. I mean, the Die Hard movies, the first couple were just so, so good. He was amazing in those movies. Uh, so those are some of my favorite actors. I don't know who you guys like, and that's including actresses. For some reason, and we also spoke about this, for some reason there are just more actors that come to mind when you think, who is your favorite? Then it's usually a male that pops to mind. And I'm not saying the females don't uh, act as well, they probably do. They most definitely do. But the, the male's roles maybe just seem more uh, memorable. That's it. I, I think. Anyway, so uh, a few other movies that I really liked. Uh, Fifth, Ele Fifth Element was amazing. Uh, and ooh, Harrison Ford. The Star Wars, the first couple of Star Wars movies were really, really good. Um, obviously, Indiana Jones. Those, those three, three of my favorite movies in the world. The, the Crystal Skull, which is the fourth one, was also quite good, and I'm impressed by how Harrison Ford handled that in his old age. He's, he's just, that just goes to show how good he is. And I'm not going to sit here talking about only Harrison Ford for the next 30 minutes, although I could, because that's how cool he is. And uh, so I'll just tell you, favorite movie, definitely Blade Runner. It is so good. If you haven't seen Blade Runner yet, get like a Blu-ray version of it. I know they, they remastered it and released it as Blu-ray recently, um, probably like 10 years ago, but... That's recently for me. <laughs> I just, I know I saw it when I was in the airport in the UK. I saw it there. Um, I was going to buy it, but I didn't have money. I didn't have pounds. But it, it comes in this nice little uh, metal box. Amazing. Blade Runner, have a look at that movie. It's old. It's old. It's sci-fi. It's a detective movie. It's got like lots of mysterious twists in it. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. I'll just tell you that you must watch Blade Runner. It is probably, it is most definitely the best movie of all time. Yes. Anyway, okay, 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 okay. So, um, and fam, fil film genre. Uh, I said uh, Western and, and sci-fi, and you take those two and combine them, and you get cowboys and aliens. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And Harrison Ford is in there. What do you know? That one would think that that would be my favorite movie of all time. It, it was good but it's not my favorite movie of all time material. So I hope that answers your question. Um, both Fab 12, UCB and Firestorm, those were your questions. Uh, I know the whole comedy actor thing might not have been good for you, but that's, that's, my, uh, that's my view on it. I, I do see Brad Pitt as my favorite comedy actor. Then, Killistic 1. Can you maybe give speculation um, about when D3 is coming? He means Diablo 3 and what stage Blizzard is on right now. So, the stage that they're on is finished. <laughs> I think the game is probably done by now. They are just probably trying to figure out when they can launch it. Like, a lot, I was told, um, not, to, not to say this because some people, I, I'm, I was told to be very clear that I, I think that we might see, and the clear part is that I, the word think, and might, both of those, 
important words here that we might see a release date announcement this week in the next week or two in that time period let's just say that okay in the next week or two we might see a release date announcement and that said we'll see the launch of the game a month to a month and a half after that so i can't really talk very much about that because that's pretty much answers your question but i do think that they're very close to done or done with the game i'm actually leaning towards done because they've been working on it for so long they wanted to release it at the end of last year already the beta is looking absolutely polished and right now what they're actually doing is they're probably just busy setting up the the ramp up to the launch that is that's just my guess i mean i could be wrong you guys might have some more insight that i don't have i know there was that recent thing that said april 17th as release and that could fit perfectly into my predictions but I'm not 100% sure. I can say that. I'm not 100% sure. That's just what I feel. Now, there could be, on the flip side, the fact that they might want to release it in June, July. I think June is the, the end of their little second quarter thing. They said second quarter. Uh, is June the end of it? January, February, March, April, May, June. It, there's a car alarm going off. It's terrible. It's interrupting my video. Anyway, yes, so June is the end of their second quarter thing. And I don't think they will release it after that. I'm pretty sure they'll release it for that. And April, May, June, it's like, it's actually very close. April 17th could work. So if I had to guess release, I'd say within the next two months, we'll be playing Diablo. I hope as well. I hope that that's, that that's true. <laughs> I hope that answers your question as well. Okay, so Frankie Hart asks, did you ever play EverQuest? If so, what we so I should actually stop you right there. No, I didn't. I've never played EverQuest. I played EverQuest 2 when they had a trial version for it, and that game wasn't very good. I just didn't enjoy EverQuest 2. I know EverQuest 1 was probably really, really good, but EverQuest 2 didn't it didn't feel very good to me. At the same time, I was probably busy playing World of Warcraft and it just felt far superior. And he asked what my favorite memories were. Um, he says some of his fondest memories are from the original EverQuest and the first two expansions. So that's interesting because that is probably one of the biggest games for a lot of people out there. And I don't want to say it was before my time because it definitely wasn't. I was heavily into playing PC games then, but that's the exact time that I was heavily into Counter-Strike and Quake and actually a bit of Warcraft 3 as well, just after that time, not, not then, when Warcraft 3 came out, which was what, 2000 and two, three, I don't know, Frozen Throne must have been two thousand. I don't know, around then, uh, but back in that time I was playing Counter-Strike, I was playing Quake, I was playing FPS mostly, and I was just finishing like a bunch of single player games, I don't even know, okay, I was playing random stuff, I wasn't really playing MMOs because we didn't have proper internet, we had this whole seven round of call thing here, and we had 56k dial up, so it was slow, it was super slow playing anything online, especially internationally, was impossible. I did try Ultima Online for a short period, but back then I didn't really play MMOs. The first proper MMO I played was probably World of Warcraft, which is sad, but because I missed out on a lot. But oh, I actually played Anarchy Online a little bit. I don't know if that came before or after World of Warcraft. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I actually didn't play that many other MMOs. I started on World of Warcraft, and I gotta say, I had some fond memories. My fondest memories in World of Warcraft, Burning Crusades launch was amazing. Working our way up to Karazhan, that was so, so good. Both myself and my girlfriend did that, and a couple of our real life friends played with us back then, and it was a lot of fun. Karazhan was just really, really cool. It was very tough. We struggled a lot. I don't know if we even cleared it, but it was fun doing it with a group of friends and it, it felt really rewarding at the time, like really, really rewarding. <laughs> it was difficult, okay? So that's pretty much the best answer I've got. I didn't really play EverQuest and I feel bad about that, but there are so many other good games out now that I think I'll be okay. And I played a lot of other games back then, RPGs like Ultima, the Ultima series, um, Ultima 7, 8, 9, those were really good. Ultima 9, not so much. Ultima 8, also not as much as Ultima 7, but they were all still pretty good. Then, next question. Cat, 12543. That's, that's gonna make my head hurt. <laughs> I don't even know how I got it right. What's your favorite food or food type or item? Uh, not, yeah, food type item. So, I don't know if this counts, but I love licorice. I really like licorice. 
uh, the right panda doesn't. So that just means there's more for me. And that's great. <laughs> I, I don't really have a favorite. I eat a lot of, I eat dried fruit quite a lot, but I eat normal fruit as well, quite a lot. Um, favorite food type item. If you mean something like burger or pizza or chicken breast or, <laughs> you know, steak, then it's tough. I, um, <clears throat> I kind of like sweet potatoes. Do you guys know what sweet potatoes are? This is a mangled bottle of water. It can't actually stand straight anymore. Look at the bottom of it. I don't know what happened to it. It wasn't me. If it was me, then I don't remember doing it. I don't know. It's really cold though. So it's good. <laughs> Are you guys jealous now? Maybe you're sitting somewhere in like extreme heat, busy watching this video. Now I feel kind of bad. Now most of you guys live in extreme cold. Judging from the comments at least. So, um, favorite food type, I love sweet potato. Okay, I've got a thing with sweet potato. I eat sweet potato with, we've got stuff that's called vegetable salt here. I don't know if you guys get that anywhere overseas. I think it might be a local thing, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, so, sweet potato with a bit of vegetable salt on and some margarine. There you go. Straight up. You can make it in the oven or in the microwave. It doesn't really matter. Microwave is like seven minutes, so it's quick. But I love sweet potato. That's really, really good. And on the sweet side of things, I like licorice. That's it. That's my final answer. I like licorice a lot. It's really good. We bought some apple flavored licorice from Woolworths the other day. Two days ago. Yesterday. Not two days. Yesterday. We got it yesterday. And it was so good. Oh. We nearly died eating it of pure ecstasy. That's how good it was. We had it with coffee. We didn't have it with the coffee, but we had a cup of coffee there. We had some licorice. We ate some licorice. We drank some coffee. It was really good. Um, and I hope that answers your question. <laughs> then Quentin421 asks, Hey Lumen, wanted to know if you're going to the Rage Expo this year. This is the last big question. And it's not really a big question. I don't know, Fluke. Am I going to the Rage Expo? <laughs> That's an inside joke, but... I'll, I'll elaborate on it right now. So, the Rage Expo is a big technology game in... Uh, yeah, it's basically a big technology expo here in South Africa. And by big, I mean tiny compared to what you guys have. Compared to, like, the GDC or E3 or any of those places, it's tiny compared to those. It's one big... Um, it's one hall where those things would be like 15 halls. It's, it's actually really small, but it's the biggest one we have. So I will probably be going. I want to go, but I'm not going to go if I don't have anything to do there. I'm not just going to go for the heck of it. There's no reason for me to be there if I'm not going to shoutcast StarCraft 2 or maybe do something with Diablo 3, but I don't know. Who knows if I'm going to do that? Um, I was going to be going for Diablo, uh, for StarCraft 2, for shoutcasting the NGL, which is the thing that Polar Fluke is organizing. Um, but they still have to organize all of that. NGL is very fresh. It's looking amazing though. Big prize money. Um, lots of big sponsors involved. It looks like a lot of fun for the local StarCraft players. They can win a lot of money. So when things get further in in uh, that's NGL's lifespan, then we'll know. They haven't actually made plans for Rage yet, but they, in, it's, they're busy talking about it. They're busy getting it done. So I don't know if I'm going to be there, but the chances are good that I will. Uh, that's what Quinton asked. And if you guys are wondering, I think you can just Google Rage Expo South Africa and you'll find a website about it. It's not that exciting. So don't expect too much. And now, the small questions. Do you watch any other game commentaries other than you, other of other YouTubers? And if so, who? I don't know how to answer that really. I don't watch Let's Plays from other people. I do, on occasion, open a Let's Play video that I think will be interesting. So, for instance, I often check, say, for uh, Jesse Cox... OMFG Catter. His channel's name is OM OMFG Catter. It stands for One Moderately Funny Gamer Catter. That's unfortunate. Jesse Cox. <laughs> anyway, I open his on occasion because he plays pretty much the same games as me. So if he gets to a part in the game uh, that I'm interested in, then I'll maybe watch his video. But I don't actually watch uh, a, a, any Let's Plays regularly. I don't, I don't follow anyone's Let's Plays. As for commentaries, I mean, that's a broad term. So I watch Total Biscuit videos pretty often. His WTF is videos because I don't buy all the games. So it's nice to see what he thinks about them. It's nice to see a display of the game before buying it. So that for that reason, I watch those videos. Uh, I watch... 
uh, a few other things. I, I, I'm, I'm subscribed to a ton of channels. I don't watch most of the videos that pop up in my feed, but I, I do watch as many as I can, as often as I can when I got some time. Uh, I don't go out of my way to watch Let's Plays though, if, if that's sort of what you meant there. Game commentaries, that's a very broad term. <laughs> anyway, in your Terraria walkthrough, I don't have the names for these people because they're supposed to be smalls. They're supposed to be quick answers. Are they? I'm not really doing them quickly. In your Terraria playthrough, you mentioned several times that your eyesight is terrible. Why don't you wear glasses or contacts? So, my eyesight isn't really terrible. I can see just fine. I have some color blindness problems and it only really affects me with certain colors. I think that the colors red and green have problems for me if they're in close proximity. Other than that, I just don't pay attention. <laughs> so I, I tend to blame it on my eyesight. So I don't look uh, as, as carefully as I would because I'm busy talking and I'm busy looking at other things like the enemies floating around. I don't spend too much time staring at the background with the minerals and the ore in. So I, tis, I just tend to miss things. My eyesight's good enough. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'd ever need to wear glasses, or not, not anytime soon at least, but I do have the color blindness thing. And that's not like, do you see in black and white? No, I don't, don't see in black. Uh, it's not a big thing. I, if there's a lot of green and some red in the middle of it, I probably won't be able to see that. Green and orange, perhaps green and a, and a darkish colored yellow. Um, and the same goes inverted. If there's a reddish color or any flavor of red with any flavor of green in, it depends on the color types or shades, but sometimes it gets a bit difficult to see them, uh, see what's going on there. But generally it's just like a bit of a mush. It's not that I can't see the colors. It's not that I can't see that there's green in the red. I just can't see what's going on exactly. So yeah, it's not it's nothing serious. And I was born like this. So it's not, it's not like it just happened when I started playing too much Terraria. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, do you plan on playing Starbound? If you guys don't know what Starbound is, I think you can go to playstarbound.com and you can read about it there. And he, he or she, whoever said this, is it's pretty much Terraria with space exploration and Pokemon fights. Now that makes it sound so, so good. Pokemon and space, two of my favorite things in one game. Sounds great. I do plan on trying it. I'm not sure if it's going to be great. I assume that they'd be improving on their Terraria formula when they make that game. So I will probably try it out. I'm a big fan of Terraria and I feel as if it could be better. I prefer the Pokemon fighting style if it's done correctly. I'll try it out. I like the trailers that they released. The images look great, but I'm not going to push to get into the beta super early. If someone else gets in before me, then that's just too bad. I might mail them and tell them that I'm interested, but that's it. Um, other than that, I probably won't play that and Terraria together, so if that does come out soon, I'll probably drop Terraria and try that. It depends. We'll see. I, I can't say it's too early to say. Um, then, next question. Do you like tycoon games such as City Life I, and I'm assuming games like SimCity? Um, and if so, would you consider doing Let's Play of a tycoon game? Uh, that's something like the most recent ones that come to mind would be Tropico, which I don't like. Now. I spoke in the previous weekly about this old EA game CD that I had and I think, if I'm not mistaken, we got in the, at the same time, it wasn't on the same CD, I don't know if it was on the same CD, maybe it was, at the same time we got another CD with Theme Park and Transport Tycoon on. Now those were amazing. Even my mother played those games. Those games were so good and if there was something as good as those that I could play, then yes, I'd do a Let's Play on that any time. But the problem with those is that like, they tend to be either really good or really bad because in Transport Tycoon, I remember that you had to start over and over again because you kept me I had to start over and over again because I kept messing things up. Theme Park was a bit easier, but I feel as if that kind of thing wouldn't make very good Let's Play material. It depends on the game, of course. Uh, who knows? There might come a really good one soon, but it's something I'm going to have to look at. So I can't, I can't really answer that with any certainty. I do like those kind of games though, but I prefer the older ones. The new tropic, Tropico and those things, not for me. I don't really enjoy them that much. Why is there a panel of glass missing in the door in your office? You guys saw that in my previous vlog. If you watched it, if you didn't, go back and watch it. That is actually for the dogs. My parents, when they used to live there, they had two dogs, or they still have them, they're on the farm now, but they needed a, a gap to go in and out. So they broke a pane out there, or they took it out neatly, so the dogs didn't get cut in the glass, and they made it into a doggy door. 
Now it's it's actually a good doggy door because there's a there's a little roof above the the door outside, so it's not like it's gonna rain in there or anything. I should have had coffee, but it's late. I need to sleep soon, so I'm not gonna have coffee now. <laughs> um, so it's not gonna rain in there or anything, and it doesn't get cold. Or sometimes there comes a cold breeze in there, yes, but right now in summer we don't really care for that. In winter we'll worry about that, then we put something in front of it. But the reason we have that is because um, we don't have any proper doggy doors here. It's not a very common thing in South Africa, funny enough. So we could either leave the door open, which is not very secure. So we, ev we lock all the doors in the house when we go to sleep, and Nero knows that there's a hole there. If he wants to go outside to bark at something, if he wants to go to the toilet or whatever, if he wants to go outside, he knows that that little hole is there, so he'll run out of our bedroom, down into the office, and out the hole at a terrible speed. I'll tell you that, he goes pretty fast through that hole, and that's that, that's why it's there. He can go through there quite easily, he's a bit bigger than my parents' dogs, but um, he, he's generally okay with it. Sometimes he has problems like you guys saw in the vlog, he goes halfway through and then he's like, Ugh! and then he backs it up and then he just decides to leave it. But um, more often than not, he's, he's got no problem with it. Anyway, that's why the hole is there. What car cars do you own? I don't actually own a car of my own. Um, we've got a, a Bucky, it's called. It's, I think the Americans call it a pickup. Um, it's a... What, what, do the, what do the people in the UK or in, the, in Europe call it? Hmm. It's a pickup. The Americans call it a pickup. Um, it's not a car, basically. But it's actually a car. So it's a, six, it's a 1600 Ford Bantam. I don't know if you guys are going to know what that is, but that's what it is. It's got a canopy on the back so that Nero can sit in it. It's got a nice mattress in the back as well. Um, it's, it's pretty much perfect for what we have now, what we want to do now. We can put our luggage in the back. Uh, we can put Nero in the back and then everyone's happy. We sit in the front, Nero sits in the back. He's got his little window that comes through to the front where we are. And he can stick his head through there and lick our ears because he does that all the time. It's nice. It's very nice. Then someone asked something really random here, and do you know Wilson Salukazana? That's a difficult name. Wilson Salukazana. I didn't know who that was. I googled it, and um, I read that it's the whale crier, the former whale crier of the town that I stayed in, uh, that we stay in. So that's interesting. I don't, I don't, I know of him, of course. I see the whale criers here all the time. Now, the, for those of you who don't know. We live in a, coast, in a coastal town and the whales come here very often. And the whale crier stands on the cliff, on the cliffs, or wherever he stands, and if he sees the whales, he'll blow this little horn of his, and the people will know that they can come to him, and from there they'll be able to see the whales. Now this was a clever thing that the, the tourist agency, tourist people of Hermanus thought up of the town, and it works. It, it works. So he stands somewhere, say he's in on that side of town, far away, um, then he'll start blowing the horn, and then anyone walking on the cliff paths or whatever might hear that. Obviously not from all the way on the other side of town, but if they're close by, they'll hear that, and then they'll swarm towards him, and they'll be able to see the whales from there. Now, it's obviously a seasonal thing, because the whales aren't actually here all year round, but that's it. That's what he does. So I don't know him, personally, but I have seen him many times, I've walked past him many times, and... Even if it is the former one, if there's a different guy doing it now, I probably saw the, f the first guy as well. So yeah, that's it. Then, have you ever thought about giving your phone number to fans so we can text you cool stuff and pictures of our pets? Well, you can actually s post them on the Facebook page because people would actually enjoy that more. Then everyone can see them and it's easier to share them. So that's the best way of doing it. Or you can email them, talesoflumen at gmail.com. That works too. Hmm, then. Uh, then that's actually all the questions. Now there were a couple of mentions here. Oh, it's Zoe said, if you didn't see it in the comments, she said that she has nearly finished drawings of myself, Helene, and Nero. Now that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see them. I can't wait to see them. It's gonna be so cool. Then, please play Amnesia with a face cam. I've had that so much already. I am gonna get a webcam soon, and webcam face cam, same thing. I don't have a camera that attaches to my PC at all. I don't have one that can do that. So, unless the iPhone can do it, can it? I don't know. But um, I will get one sometime and then perhaps I'll mix it into my Let's Plays or into that kind of thing. Maybe not Amnesia. Let's hope another scary game comes out soon. That's good because Amnesia has been played to death by now. Um, but yes, sometime. I'll do it sometime. 
Uh, then, someone... What is it, boy? Hey, what are you here? Hey, what is it? Do you hear him? Someone's interrupting his sleep. Oh, it's, it's just too bad, my boy. You must ignore that little dog from next door. You ignore him, okay? Nero's looking thoroughly unimpressed. Let me show you. Let me show you. Look at those ears. Those ears can tell a story of like a thousand words. So many feelings going into those ears right now. Oh, shit. He's so unimpressed. He's not happy at all. Those ears, wow. This is sad. When they back like that, then he's just, oh. When they go back and up, then he's happy. But that, what he had there now, that's just unimpressed. He's not, he's not impressed at all. He's probably gonna go sleep with his mommy now. Bye. Okay, okay. So, there were actually no, no more questions left. Someone else said that I must create a channel on StarCraft 2 named Lumen or Tales. <laughs> it was bound to happen. I think we all know it was bound to happen. And he wants me to open the sliding door for him now. So, I'm gonna let you guys experience this. Stay right, stay right there. And now listen, listen. <laughs> He's outside now. That was amazing, wasn't it? Anyway, he speeds out there so, so fast. It's actually dangerous sometimes. So I'm gonna create a channel on StarCraft sometime. Uh, and he says that for stuff like mono battles or fan games or whatever. And when I get time for that, sure, it'll be nice to do that. And yeah, I, I would not mind. Okay, so I'll do something like that sometime soon. When I do do it, I'll put the information on my channel somewhere so that it's easy to find. Same thing as for the IRC channel. If you guys didn't know, there is a Tales of Lumen IRC channel. It's Tales of Lumen, so hash Tales of Lumen on QuakeNet. QuakeNet's pretty easy to find. You can just Google QuakeNet and use their web client to join the channel Tales of Lumen. It's quite easy. I do have a video up showing how to join there and it even links to, this, to the QuakeNet thingy. So it's easy. Anyway, so that's gonna be it. I've actually answered all the questions. There weren't that many questions. And what I'm gonna do next week is, I'm gonna answer the questions that you give this week and I might give some sort of topic. So I might give you something to talk, either ask about or something that we'll discuss or something like that, basically. So it'll just mean that we'll actually have, my boy, don't, don't scratch there, okay? So it means that we won't run out of things to discuss or you won't run out of things to ask me or anything like that. Uh, so I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but I will tell you in the next Q&A. So if there aren't that many questions, it's okay. It's fine if the Q&A is a bit shorter because I'm going to put lots of vlogs out and you can actually ask questions in there, so that's fine too. But that's actually it. The only other things I wanted to talk about was that I'm probably going to have a video for... I'm going to work on videos this week for maybe a video of the last mission in Mass Effect 2 so that those of you that didn't play Mass Effect 2 or any of the other Mass Effects can just see where you're coming from going into 3. Because I would absolutely love to commentate and do the last mission in Mass Effect 2 again. I've actually, I installed it today to have a look if it was going to be fine and run perfectly and record nicely and all that. And it seems like it won't be a problem, but I don't know if you guys want to see that, but I think it would be fun. I did the same thing for Portal when Portal 2 came out. I made a Portal 1 ending video. And a lot of you will say, well, that's a bit lazy. Um, why don't you do the full game? Well, because Mass Effect's coming out next week and we only get it on Friday, by the way, so my videos are gonna be out a bit late. My first videos will probably be up on Saturday, hopefully, if I don't get it too late on Friday. So check back here on Saturday for those videos. It'll be like a couple of days later than the rest of the world's videos, but it's something that I can't really change right now, seeing that I got the collector's edition of the game and I'm getting the physical copy. So I'll do an unboxing of that and everything. You guys can check for that here um, over the weekend. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I might do an ending video for Mass Effect 2. So I'll play through the last mission, show you guys what choices I made there. And then you guys will get to know my character before we jump into Mass Effect 3 with it. That's gonna be super exciting. And then you can see what happens at the end of Mass Effect 2 and how you're gonna go from that into Mass Effect 3. I think it could be a lot of fun. So keep that in mind, that might come this week. So it'll keep you busy till my Mass Effect 3 comes out. Okay, because it's gonna come, it's happening. 
And this week I might do a lot more Assassin's Creed because I want to get a lot of that done. Or maybe not a lot more, maybe a few longer videos of Assassin's Creed. So fewer videos, uh, longer length, something like that. Other than that, the journal entry I might delay till Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, but that's not because I'm not done with it, that's just because of I wanted to release then instead. Um, other than that, then Counter-Strike GO, Global Offensive, CS GO, I'm probably going to do a video for that, where I'm going to play against bots or something, just so I can show you guys how it looks, show you the menus, show you how the game feels, show you all the guns, stuff like that, basically. And... That also could seem pointless, but some people want to see it because often you see like live streams of the game or you see these trailers and stuff. I've been told that there's no NDA for it, so I can make videos of it. People just aren't that interested in them, but I'm sure I can make it interesting. So check back here soon for that. Other than all of that though, the week's going to be pretty normal. Lots of news episodes coming up, lots of other gameplay commentaries. Um, there's actually coming an hour long Skyrim with or after this. I'm busy rendering it right now. And that's going to be a lot of fun. That's actually the entire Mizinsha left done. Very cool. I love that place. Anyway, that's it. I'm done with the Q&A. Check back as soon for more. Most importantly though. Most importantly though. Happy Nero the Watchdog. Happy that.